All right, welcome to Collages.net's webinar series, Infant Portraits 101, and this is part two, followed up from last week's webinar. Um, I really want to thank each and every one of you for taking the time out of your busy schedule to attend today's webinar. Um, I am seeing a lot of familiar names from last week, and I, I do, uh, do think you guys are going to learn a lot more this week as well. My name is Kevin. I will be hosting the webinar, and as a product and workflow consultant here at Collages, I've spoken to thousands of studios over the past eight years. Uh, now I work very closely with the marketing team to develop online tutorials and webinars. Uh, today I'm joined again by a very special guest and dear friend of collages.net, Pete Wright. And Pete is the owner of PW Photography located in Richmond, Virginia. Uh, thank you so much for joining us today, Pete. How are you doing? I'm great, Kev. How are you? I'm very well, thank you. Um, so before we actually jump into the webinar, I just want to go over a few basic uh, features of how to use the design or how to use the webinar uh, program. So as you'll see in the upper right-hand corner, um, there is a small window uh, that you'll see here. And if you need to maximize or minimize this window at any time, you simply want to click the orange arrow found uh, right here. And that will minimize the window. If you need to maximize it to ask a question, uh, please feel free to click the orange arrow again. Um, and then once again, any questions that you may have throughout the webinar, I do ask that you use the chat field down here, and I will be answering these questions um, as, as quickly as we can throughout uh, while Pete's talking. And then uh, at the end, we are going to do a, a Q&A session for some of the most commonly asked questions, just so Pete can answer them for you. Uh, so without further ado, I am going to pass the screen on to Pete. So uh, Pete, take it away. All right. Let's see here. Show my screen. I hope everybody's doing all right. I'm glad you joined us. Uh, um, and hopefully, uh, like Kev said, we've got a few uh, few faces back from last time and a few new faces this time. And I, I say faces as if I can actually see you guys. But uh, hopefully all of you enjoyed last week. And for those of you that were here last week, for the benefit of the ones that weren't here last week, I'm going to touch on some of the early stuff that I talked about in the program going over some of the office displays and marketing and just how we get our clients in. Uh, just, I'm, I'm going to touch on it a little bit at the beginning and then we're going to get into the infant stuff. Uh, and hopefully I might cover a little bit of new stuff that maybe I didn't touch on last week. I know last week I kind of rushed at the end to um, get information in because I felt like we were running short on time. Uh, but Kev said I can go as long as I need to. So. I'm, I'm going to make sure I cover everything in depth this time. And uh, again, always happy to answer questions at the end. I know several people emailed last week because I talked about the posing guide that I showed during the program last week that we sell and also had offered to uh, share our pricing information that I'm going to talk about in more depth this, this time. Uh, if anybody is interested in getting copies of our pricing or information about the posing guide, please feel free to email me, Pete, at pwphotography.com. Uh, uh, this week we will uh, be responding to everybody. We wanted to wait until both sessions, uh, both of these sessions were done before we did follow-up so we could kind of hit everybody at once. So please don't think we were ignoring you last week. I think we probably gave people quick responses last week, but uh, this week once both sessions are done, we'll be following up. So let's get started. Let's jump into the program here. Um, infant one at sessions 101 we have done infants uh, infant sessions for probably about seven years now our studio has been in existence for 15 years and I've been doing this for 24 years uh, 15 years ago I actually started the studio and I was doing primarily I would do weddings here and there and a few portraits here and there but I was primarily a sports photographer I covered college and professional sports uh, and we had a lot of friends that would get married and say, hey, can you come shoot a wedding? And I thought it was the easiest thing in the world because you can't really tell somebody if they score a touchdown to go back and do it again. But if somebody messes something up at a wedding, you can usually at least restage it or redo it. So it, it, it came pretty easy to me, but the biggest challenge was when I had to sit down and photograph a baby or, or photograph a maternity session. And babies were bigger challenge and, and, and uh, small toddlers. And I found that exciting because at the end of the day, you know, when you get to a point where you're doing a lot of the same stuff over and over again and you get to a point where it doesn't feel like a challenge, it's pretty exciting 
when you find something in photography that is challenging. Uh, so we really embraced uh, infant and toddler photography uh, pretty early on, and then we got pregnant with twins that are now three years old. They just turned three about a week and a half, two weeks ago. Uh, we got pregnant with twins, and uh, once we got pregnant with twins, I tell you, it, it took off for us in terms of our passion for it. it it's uh, I, I, I'm I'm a sucker for kids, and, and I'm a big old softy, so. Uh, I, I absolutely love to photograph them. So we'll get into all the things that we do and the things that really make our input sessions really, really successful for us in a few minutes. But I want to start out about uh, the same way I did last week. I want to talk a little bit about how we get those input sessions in. So let's talk about marketing just a little bit. And the primary things for us are two big things are medical offices and store displays. Um, everybody obviously has doctor's offices no matter where you live around you and there's always going to be OBGYNs that are typically our best source of doctor's offices in terms of getting clients in. You don't necessarily have to approach doctor's offices directly as a photographer. In fact, I would highly recommend against doing that because typically if you walk into any situation where you're just offering your services outright saying, I want to give you this or I want to do this, you know, the reality is they're kind of thinking, what's in it for me? This is clearly just, you know, self-beneficial for your studio, for your, you as a photographer. Uh, with medical offices, typically what we do is we'll actually ask our friends that are patients at the various OBGYNs about the doctors that they're going to. And in our case, one of our main ones was actually my wife's doctor's office. Um, but we'll ask our friends about the doctor's offices that they attend and we'll ask them, you know, if they remember and if they don't remember, ask them, hey, next time you're there, can you take a look around and tell us if they have a display and tell us if they have any images up uh, that are there. Now, if they tell us that the doctor's office already has a display there from another photographer, in no way would we ever approach that doctor's office. Uh, you, you know, and I, I can't reiterate this enough, we are a, a, a large industry and we're a growing industry, but you know, one of the great things about the success of our industry is that we have great conventions like Imaging USA where you see tens of thousands of photographers all there together with a common goal and they're all getting along having fun together, sharing information and sharing knowledge and you know, being honest and friendly with each other. So the second we start doing dishonest things where we hurt each other's businesses, you, you just have to be careful because that can come back and bite you. There's more than enough business to go around and I know sometimes it doesn't feel like it, but you know the reality is those photographers that are successful are the ones that are making that smart concerted effort and doing things the right way. So if you get to a doctor's office that already has a photographer, you know, kudos for them for being smart and getting in there. And I know there's times when you feel like, man, every single doctor's office I walk into has the exact same photographer and they're kind of monopolizing the industry around you. And, you know, I, that it's that way around here to an extent because there's two or three of us that are in most of the doctor's offices. Uh, you know, and then you just have to be creative about other outlets because there are dentists, there are non-OBGYN doctors, there are all kinds of things. We do, uh, with, with a local dentist, we do uh, smiles campaigns where we'll put photographs up of kids smiling, showing great smiles with great teeth up in their doctor's offices. And we'll give them, uh, we give the doctor, the dentists uh, gift certificates to give to their kids, their, their patients when they have their braces removed for a free portrait session with us to be able to show off their brand new smile and things like that. So you just have to be creative. But I know we're going to talk more about the infant stuff here. So let's let's go through and look at some of our doctor's offices. This is one of our main ones here. It's a huge OBGYN. I think it's the largest one in Virginia. Uh, it's a chain of several. And this is one of their main offices. Uh, it's Virginia Physicians for Women. and this was actually where our kids were. Well, they weren't born here, but this was my wife's OBGYN. And in this case, I think I mentioned this last time, when we came in, there were other, uh, there wasn't other photographer's images on the wall. So we did not approach them about it. We never mentioned anything to them about it. But just through our relationship with them as a patient, obviously our doctor and nurse knew that we were photographers because they asked you these questions. 
And the nurse actually said, you know, we'd love to put some of your work on the wall here. And we said, we, we also said to her, you know, there's another photographer's work here. We really, really don't want to step on anybody's toes. We just assume, you know, take a pass. If you'd like to take some of our literature to pass out to your, your, your actual patients, that's fine, but we don't want to step on anybody's toes. And she said, well, actually, in this case, we went to a frame shop to buy the frames, and when we bought the frames, we approached the frame shop and asked them if they had uh, any photos that we could use for the frames to put up. So they had actually not only purchased the frames, but they also paid for the portrait work that was in them. They didn't get it from the photographers. So it was a lucky stroke for us uh, that it worked out that way, and uh, so we were happy to provide them with work. Uh, this was a brand new office that they were building. Uh, they transitioned from one office to the other, uh, and we had already provided them with work for the other office, but when they built this space, they actually invited us in so that we could see the color palette, so that we could see the size of the office and the size of the exam rooms, and gave us kind of carte blanche in terms of where we put things, and even asked us certain design elements about what would look great there based on the photography that we'd be providing them, which was kind of a rare thing. Uh, we were able to give them some input. If you look on the screen here, this is actually two photos. It's not really a photo stitch job. I just put two photos beside each other and to show you the full size of the room. It's a huge waiting room. And we put gallery wraps all the way around. We got all these gallery wraps from collages.net. Uh, we found gallery wraps to really be the most economical way of doing displays in doctor's offices. Number one, because we don't have to pay for a frame. And number two, because they're just quick and easy to get in and be able to drop off and hang, it, hang up on the walls there. Uh, the one tip about store displays when you're doing gallery wraps, whenever you're putting something up, whenever you're putting a gallery wrap up on the wall or taking it down or moving uh, around or adjusting, Whenever you sit a gallery wrap on the floor, always put it upside down. And this is just one of those quick, I never thought about that, head scratchers. I always, always, always place the gallery wrap upside down on the floor if I'm going to put it on the floor and lean it against the wall. Because, And if you've ever dealt with gallery wraps, you know that the corners of gallery wraps stuff very, very easily. Uh, so we try to be extremely careful in general, but if we're ever going to have a situation where a gallery wrap is going to touch the floor where you put it upside down or at the top side of the gallery wrap to the floor because you very, you, you very rarely if ever see the top edges of a gallery wrap. You only see the bottom corners. So if something's going to get scuffed, I'd rather it be those top corners. And display ones always get scuffed because they get so much traffic and they get moved around. So And we also instruct the doctor's office and the nurses if they're ever taking things down or moving things around, we always ask them, hey, if you take these down, please put it so and, and put them on the floor. Please put it so that the top corners and the top edges are on the floor, so that if something gets scuffed, it's the top. And we always say we understand that there's a good chance that they're going to get scuffed, so don't worry about it if they do. But we try to do it in a way that it's going to do the least amount of damage. So that's a quick tip about that. And another quick tip is if you look at these gallery wraps, for the most part. They're all either black on the edges or white on the edges. Uh, and we try to be careful about choosing colors that wrap around that we can find matching Sharpies or matching markers with. Uh, it's kind of nice to be able to go back in and take a black Sharpie with us and touch up the corners whenever we're there just to dress them up just a little bit so they're not as bad. Uh, we were actually yesterday at, I can't remember what store it was, but Sharpies now come in these six and eight packs with every single color. So they have gray, black, red, every color you could imagine. And we'll actually grab a pack of those Sharpies and take them with us so that we can hit just about every single color that you can imagine there. I'd rather see a color that's close, <coughs> excuse me, rather than just a white corner or a white spot on the, on the corners there. At any rate, let me keep on moving. With the gallery wraps in this display, uh, every single one of them has our logo on the bottom corner of it. Now, when we do a store display, no matter what we do, whether it's a client's image or a store display, we always put our logo on the bottom corner of anything larger than an 8x10. 
Uh, in this case, everything in this doctor's office is, is, is at least a 20 by 24. So just to kind of give you a scale, the images that look the smallest to you in that room are 20 by 24. The other ones that you're seeing, I think, go up to a 24 by 36. Probably that one over the couch there is a 24 by 36 or 24 by 30, something like that. Um, but if it's a client piece, we put a simple PW there. But if it's a store display, we put our PW logo, and then under it, we put pwphotography.com. Uh, obviously, our clients don't need to see our email address or our website address, but for potential clients, we're going to put our website address on there so that if they get in there and they're admiring our work, uh, they can always see how to contact us and where to find us. Now, to that end, on all of the tables around the room, we have postcards that offer uh, usually a discount off of our services. So if they see our work, they can look on the tables or in the nurses' stations where they're checking in and actually pick up a postcard about us that will give them a discount off of our services. We do rotate the, the offers that we give. I think when we first started this display, we were doing a free portrait session and a free 5 by 7 So we were offering them an opportunity to come in for free and get a free 5 by 7 just to get them in the door. Uh, and that was very popular, and we were getting good sales off of that, so it wasn't like we weren't making money. But, you know, it, it, there comes a point when you don't really need to do free anymore, and you just kind of realize, okay, I've got all the display work I'm ever going to need right now more than anything. I just need to make sure that I have truthfully paying clients. And what we did find was every once in a while, it was rare, but every once in a while we would have somebody that would book that free session and then not show up. And not only would they not show up, but they wouldn't call or email to, to, to let us know they weren't coming or to reschedule. So what we did was we changed the offer to a 50% off of a session fee and a 5 by 7 or sometimes a 25% off of a session fee or 75%. We changed the offer to see which ones get the best response. The best response typically is from the half off of a session fee with a free 5 by 7 from their session. Uh, it gives them the perception of perceived value that you know you're going to pay for something that that is actually worth of worth a good value. The other nice thing about that was if somebody is paying a session fee, they're not going to not show up or at least call to reschedule. They're going to do something to make sure that they don't just lose their fifty dollars session fee that they paid. So that is our display there. This is the welcome packet. Just about every OBGYN that we talk to has a welcome packet. And in this case, the doctor actually, or the, the, the office actually approached us in addition and said, you know, we'd love to put some information in, your, in our welcome packet that gets handed out to every single one of our new patients. Uh, it's one of those things now that we learn to always ask if we can put information in there. So you can see on the right-hand side at the very front of every one of their welcome packages is a card with our images in it and, again, a uh, session a session offer so that every single new patient is getting an opportunity to come in and photograph with us. Now the session offer does not is not specific to maternity or infant photography. It's just for a session because they don't just treat women that are pregnant or expecting or have small children. They treat women of all ages there. So there are sometimes women that They've had all the children they want that are grown up, but they'd love to have a family portrait session. So they can use it for that as well. So always good to try to get into that welcome package as well. This is the exam room. We've got two gallery wraps in every single exam room. Uh, and this is fantastic. We actually I, I told a story last time about a, a client, a, a lady that became a client of ours that was sitting in the exam room and she called us up and said, you know, I'd like to schedule a session with you. And our first question is always, well, how did you hear about it? She said, well, I'm a patient at Virginia Physicians for Women, and I saw your portraits on the wall. I said, oh, that's fantastic. Uh, you know, and we, we got to talking about her session. And she said, well, I'm actually sitting in the exam room right now, so I don't have a way to look at my calendar. And But she said, you know, it was such a stressful thing for me because I really hate visiting the doctor's office. I always get tense. And when I got in here, uh, it, and it was an OBGYN appointment because she was expecting. She said, when I got in here and I sat down on the exam table, I was, and I was so stressed out and so nervous when I looked up and saw the beautiful portraits of an expectant mom and then a, and a, and a new baby on the wall, 
it changed my feeling and my mood completely and got me excited about the experience that I was getting ready to go through, and I knew that I had to have the same thing. You could not ask for somebody to tell you something better than that and to call you from the exam room table. I said, well, I'll tell you what, why don't you finish your doctor's appointment and when you're done, give us a call back and we'll get you on the calendar to have a session. Uh, that particular patient came in, became a great client for us and has since referred, I think, either three or four of her other friends that were also expecting because of the experience that we gave her. So having those displays in the, in the office really does give a great environment and it allows uh, it allows those patients to imagine being photographed the same way. This was another thing. This is a store display we have uh, and this is at Babies, uh, USA Baby. Uh, there's, all, there's Babies R Us which is a chain from um, Toys R Us. Babies R Us does not allow store displays. If you can get in there that's great but they're such a corporate thing and they have their own photography studios that they're, they're not going to let you in, but uh, USA Baby is also a corporate chain, and if you're familiar with IKEA, it's kind of the IKEA of uh, baby furniture in that when you walk into a USA Baby chain store, it's basically broken up into little rooms like this all throughout. So you basically do the tour and see each little room set up with color themes uh, that carry throughout and furniture that matches so that a client can imagine exactly how their nursery would look. Well, in this case, again, we did not approach them as a photographer saying, you know, I'd love to put a display up in here. We actually approached them as a client once again. And this is always the key. Now, you don't have to be pregnant or expecting or have children uh, to, to approach them this way. Basically, you can go in with the notion of being a client of theirs by wanting to buy a gift, for, a, gift some, a gift for someone. And even if you really don't know anybody that needs something, it doesn't really matter. You can just go under, in under that premise. Because if you're in to purchase something from them, then you're actually in there because you're showing them that you value the service and the product that they offer and that you'd like to have what they're, what they're offering for yourself. So it's always a good way to open the door. In our case, we walked in as clients searching for two cribs for our kids because we were having twins. Well, as soon as they find out that you're having two of anything, uh, it actually opens more doors because they realize you're going to spend a lot of money. <laughs> the, I think the least expensive crib this place has is $549, and they give you a whopping 10% off for the second one if you're having twins. So, uh, it, you know, if we, if we offered a, a whopping 10% off for matching huge packages, that would be fantastic, right? So. Uh, through the process of going through and, and making our purchases, we discussed with them, you know, we really love the fact that this is set up like a nursery in the way you can see everything, but the one thing that you're missing to us is photographs. Uh, it, it feels like a room, but it doesn't feel very warm because it's missing that element of person or personality. And, you know, if you have portraits in there, it's going to make it feel more like a real nursery. And they said, well, that would be great. We'd love to put some portraits in here. Would you do that for us? And then our next thing was, well, we'd love to do that for you. Not only would we love to provide you with portraits for your, uh, your store displays, but we'd also like to help you, you know, make more money in terms of hitting the sales numbers that, that you're having. So on the wall here, you'll see uh, in the background there is a, a portrait, a black and white portrait of, of a little baby curled up, and that's actually our daughter when she was six days old. So fortunately for us, we've got kids in addition to the ones that we have, so a lot of times we like to put our own children's portraits on the wall for our displays. So if we ever rotate them out, we get to put them in our home or whatever. Um, but anyway, when we, when we approach them about making that extra money, we say, here's what we'd like to do. What are your sales averages? And if the store says, well, you know, our average is 750 but we. And our next question is, well, what, what would you like your average to be? And if they say it's $1,000, you say, well, here's what we want to do. We want to provide you with a gift certificate that basically would be from you, not from us, to your, to your, basic, your typical client. And if you have a client that's in and they're sitting at that $250 price range, then what you can do is offer them the extra incentive of saying, you know, if you spend another 200 or 250 dollars 
we're going to give you a gift certificate for free portraits over at PW Photography. All of the work that you've been enjoying in each of our displays is from their studio. It's nearby. And you'll get a big chunk of your value back in the difference that you pay in the form of a, a gift certificate from us to take right over there to their studio and get portraits taken, whether it's from your maternity session or an infant session. You can use it however you'd like. It becomes a sales tool for them and helps them get their numbers up. Now the neat thing about that is all of the salespeople in this store work off of commission. So they're looking for any opportunity they can to get their numbers up. So when we have work on display in each of the little sections there, then they're basically kind of seeding those clients by saying, don't you love this work? Look at this photography. It's beautiful. They're kind of getting them, pointing it out and getting them to start to notice that so that when they try to close and get that sale bumped up later on, they've already bought into the quality and value of what we'd be providing as photography and then finding out, oh, I get a gift certificate. Now, we, we offer them the value of a coupon based on the value of client they have. If they have a client that's spending two or three thousand dollars with them, then we're willing to give them a larger gift certificate gift certificate to give to that client of theirs because to us a client that's willing to spend two or three thousand dollars on baby furniture is a person that has expendable income is willing to spend more money on nicer things and if I give them a two or three hundred dollar gift certificate here I have great confidence that if I give them an equally good experience and take care of them here that they're going to spend well more than the two or three hundred dollars that I've given them if they're a client that's spending four, five, six hundred dollars, then I'm probably only only going to give them about a hundred dollar gift certificate. A hundred dollars would probably buy them one portrait in our studio, uh, so it's not going to give them a whole lot, but it still gives them some value to work with. The other thing that we always try to do is uh, we try to photograph the children and families of any uh, anybody that's number one either at the doctor's office or at these stores because. And we don't charge them for it. There's no session fee. Um, but the importance of that is if we photograph their families and their children and put them on the store displays there, then they're going to show it off even more because everybody's proud of their families. So we put the store display up there. And then whenever we rotate images out and put new stuff up, we just give them the gallery wraps or images uh, from, from their display so that they can take them home with them. And they're always very appreciative of that. Um, here's another room. Uh, and that's actually my six-day-old son being held by my wife there. His name is Charlie. And then if you look over on the dresser there, there's a small frame that has three little pictures in it. We actually, they sell lots of frames there as well, and we actually go through and every single frame in that store has our portraits in it with pwphotography.com. Um, there you go. There's some of the frames that you can see the pwphotography.com on in the portraits. So uh, a little bit more, there is such a thing lunch, and this is something that we do in some cases every single month, in some cases every other month. Uh, depends on who it's for, who it's with. But for instance, with OBGYN we have that's here, about every month we call them up and we find out what day is best for us to come and treat their entire office to lunch. Now, this is easy, the easier than you might think because we found that most OBGYNs typically just shut down for an hour in the middle of the day. So rather than trying to have a rotating lunch schedule where certain nurses are gone or certain doctors are gone and they deal with you know rushes or anything like that, that it's easier just to, we're going to close the office for, for appointments from 12 to 1 or 11 to noon or whatever the time may be and let everybody take lunch at the same time. So we find out what day works, and we basically bring them a free lunch. And we try to change it every single month. Sometimes we'll bring them pizzas. Sometimes we'll grab like a six-foot-long sub. Uh, sometimes we'll do like pasta dishes that we'll bring in pasta dishes. We always bring in drinks and a dessert as well. I don't think it's ever cost us more than $50 to bring in lunch to feed everybody. You'd be surprised how inexpensive it is. I mean, for example, if you're doing pizzas, I think just about everybody's doing like a medium pizza for five or five and a half dollars. Uh, this particular doctor's office, I want to say, has 20 to 25 employees. So we'll buy like six or seven pizzas. 
a few drinks and either a cake or boxes of fresh made cookies or cupcakes or something like that and we'll spend about fifty dollars to take it in but then what we do is we put a card with that food that basically says thank you for supporting PW photography we really appreciate all that you do for us and we'll also have cards on there for free sessions again for each of them to use saying please feel free to come in for a complimentary portrait session of your family as a thank you for everything that you've done and for the clients that you've referred to us. So it's always, always great. We always get a great response from that. What we've heard from nurses and doctors there is that it's such a nice day for them when we do this for them because typically on the average day, you know, they're so busy in the mornings trying to not only get their get themselves ready, but get their children ready for school, get their kids' lunch packed up, then having to figure their lunch out. They always say, you know, when we know that we don't have to fix lunch, that gives us that extra 10 or 15 minutes in the morning that we don't have to worry about because it's one less thing we have to do that day. And it makes that day a, a much more stress-free day for them. So it, it's, it's just, it's a much bigger deal than you think it is. And it always works out to our benefit. So that's something I definitely highly recommend trying at least once just to see, you know, what kind of response you get. Um, we're going to touch a little bit more on marketing. We talked about doctor's offices and store displays. I'm going to touch really quick on charity events and word of mouth. Uh, charity events, one of the quick things that we changed, we used to a charity event to go through and provide just, here's a gift certificate with a display for a free family portrait session and a 16 by 20 or whatever it was. And we just gave it to them and walked away and we were done. And hopefully we'd see the client. Sometimes we would, sometimes we wouldn't. You know, charity auctions are kind of hit or miss because, you know, obviously you want to think this is a great place for us to pick up a client because, you know, philanthropist, anybody that's, that's making donations has extra money. You know, they're going to have money to spend. That's the client I want. If they're making donations, then I want them to come in to spend money with me. They actually, they obviously have some expendable income. Well, the problem is a lot of times you'll have people that will spend three or four or five hundred dollars uh, to buy the portrait session that you've donated and they really could care less that they're getting a portrait session. They're just bidding so that they can make a donation and will probably, you know, in some cases may never use that, that session. So what we decided to do is try to make it so that it was something that they would use and give them options. So instead of just offering one big, huge prize, we would basically talk to them and say, what we want to do is offer you three or four smaller ones, like a $250 to $300 value that you could put throughout the room that gives you multiple opportunities to have uh, winnings from people there. Now, what we would do is do one for a maternity and infant session, one for a family portrait session, one for a new business headshot, and what we would also do is ask the charity to spread them out and not put them together. Um, the worst thing to me is to have two or three different items and then they're all right beside each other because they're probably really only going to pay attention to one of them. However, if you're spread throughout the room and you ask specifically that they do that, the nice part about that is it gives people multiple times to see you over and over and over again. And it allows us to hit a broader demographic because we've offered multiple things. So if you've got a person that's walking around there and they don't need a family portrait session, but wow, you know, I could use a new business portrait, then you've given them something that applies directly toward them and you're more likely to uh, have results and response from the product that you put out there for offer for that charity event. Our ultimate goal is to get them in studio. Additionally, uh, we also always ask if they have a live auction, and if they're having live auction, we want to know what the minimum is that we have to donate to be included in the live auction. We always want to be in the live auction because the live auction items always get a lot more hype than the silent auction items. They get a little bit more advertisement, and they get a lot more talk on the evening of, particularly when the auctioneer stands on the block because they're going to walk around holding your portraits in the air while they're talking about it. They're going to talk about how great your studio is and how wonderful the work is. They're going to point out, look at the wonderful imagery that they're holding up, and they're just going to overhype it because they want to get the numbers up as high as possible. So that's going to be the most talk you're going to hear, and they're going to say your studio name over and over and over again. So you're not relying on somebody walking by and seeing you on a table. 
everybody in the room is standing there paying attention to what they're doing and hearing them say PW photography, PW photography, PW photography over and over again. That is key. That's, that's priceless. And then uh, last but not least on this is word of mouth. Word of mouth is huge for us. We, did, we started doing something called Club Mom a few years ago, uh, and we kind of took this from our high school senior ambassador program where we were doing referrals for high school seniors for every one of your friends that you send in. We're going to give you X amount of dollars or credits or whatever it was that we were giving them. We said, you know, why can't that work for any other type of portrait sessions? So we created Club Mom. And with Club Mom, what we would do was whenever we did a session for a client, we would pick our favorite image from that session. And when they came in for their purchase session, we would give them a stack of 50 cards. On one side of the card, it had our favorite image with our logo on it. And on the other side of the card, it had an offer for a free session for their friend. And that was it, just a free session. Now, we've, and the same thing, we've also switched that up and tried various other things, whether it was a half off of a session or whatever. Uh, what we found with this one was, you know, they've already got the, a friend telling them how much they loved our work. They can show them instantly, here's a picture of my child or from my maternity session on the other side so they can instantly see how nice our work is. So we didn't have to give a whole heck of a lot on this one. A free session was usually plenty because the, there was no risk. It's not costing them anything to try us, uh, it, only if they want to buy something. So we gave them these cards and we basically told our clients, for every client that you have that comes in and does a session with us and returns one of these cards to us, we're going to give you a $100 credit to use towards your port, port purchases. Now, our average sale is usually around $1,400. So if we, had a, if we had one of our clients send in 10 people, then we were making $14,000 in sales in exchange for giving them a thousand dollar credit and they could use it all together at the same time so we have had people that would kind of bank their credit and get three four five hundred dollars in credit and then come in and and place an order uh, and that's fine with us however they want to do it because the reality is if every time they send that that card in and we we can recognize who the client was just by seeing the photo that's on the card Every time one of those cards came in, that's a new client for us. And then we put them on the exact same program. So that's worked out really well. Word of mouth is huge for us. If you spend a lot of time really whining and dining and taking care of your clients, giving them a high-end feel and impression in terms of providing them with you know, the right atmosphere, having music playing, giving them a drink menu of sodas and waters or refreshments, uh, providing them with robes if they're here for maternity sets, just little things like that but just really taking great care of them in addition to creating great photographs, they're always going to refer you because a lot of times people are used to the service that they get at Pennies or Sears or Portrait Innovations where they're literally being herded in and herded out and their goal is more than anything to make them shop uh, in their clothing section or check out our appliances and keep them in the store as long as possible while they wait to see their images. And it's not nearly as pleasant of an experience. And they spend 10 or 15 minutes photographing them versus the hour.